Thank you very much for having me. Um, I'm the speaker that has to leave a bit early tonight because I've missed a lot of my daughter's bedtimes recently, so I'm trying to get home for one of them, so apologies for that. Um, I have been listening to the first speakers this evening, and a lot of your struggles sound very similar to what we're going through right now. Um, I, so my name is Gianna. I'm a registrar in palliative medicine. I work part-time, and that's partly for family and partly for uh, my own personal health reasons. And I was the main instigator in Leicester of a grassroots movement, which we titled Meet the Doctors. So we were the people that you saw on once in a while town centre, sometimes on strike days, sometimes not, uh, collecting your signatures. And I'm very proud to be a part of a group of about 20 junior doctors from across the country that delivered 50,000 signatures to David Cameron at Whitehall on Wednesday this week. Um, we also delivered an 18 meter scroll that was at one of the demos uh, in February earlier this year against the junior doctor's contracts. And it was an amazing feeling to be part of something like that. And we have a lot of other tricks up our sleeve. But I just wanted to tell you a little bit about our fight. Um, and you can probably see some of the similarities in it with your own. First thing I wanted to say is that junior doctors are more than just junior doctors. We also have families, mortgages, we take care of our children and our parents. I'm 41 and I'm still paying off my student loan. We have a lot of our own chaos outside of the chaos of our work environment. And I've seen the hospital from the other side um, on bank holidays right, and on weekends, when apparently there are no doctors at hospitals. My husband, unfortunately, recently has been unwell and one Saturday, um, when he became particularly poorly, he was seen by a junior doctor, he was seen by a consultant, he had three C CT scans, and then talked to other disciplines about what the best course of action going forward with it was. And so I just want to reassure you that we very much already have a seven-day NHS, no matter what the government tries to tell you or how they try to spin this argument in their favor. Some of the main issues with our contract is they're wanting to redefine social hours, which are currently from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. from Monday to Friday. And they want to make that from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday to Friday, and also include social working as 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturday. What this means is that the way we're paid is we get a basic rate of pay, and then we get a supplement on top of that based on the anti-social hours that we work. And we will, we will get paid less because we will receive less supplement for unsocial or antisocial hours because more of our hours are suddenly going to become sociable. They say that their counter argument is that they'll increase our basic pay and that they'll offer pay protection for people of a certain grade for a period of three years after the introduction of the contract. So what I have to say to that is that, well, that's unacceptable. Because if we agree to these social hours as junior doctors, it's going to set a horrible precedent. And then they will impose those so new social hours on nurses, on other training staff, or other, other healthcare professions. And indeed, we'll probably try to roll that out to any other sector that they can. And if we weren't losing money, which they perpetually say in the media that we aren't, if we weren't losing money, on this contract, why would we need pay protection? Um, and for those of us who are eligible for pay protection, of which I am one, I just, we just don't think it's acceptable to sell off our future generations of doctors just for the sake of our, our personal gain currently. The other thing is, is if Saturdays and 10 p.m. at night were normal social hours, why is it that we, the, those of us that are lucky enough to have children can't get easily accessible <coughs> childcare at those times? The other big part of our contract dispute is that our hours are currently monitored. Every so often, the trust has to monitor our hours. And if we are working more than what we're supposed to be working, then they have a financial penalty imposed upon them. 
And the government, although they keep saying that we're going to be working less hours with this contract, want to do away with that financial disincentive. And they want to introduce um, a retrospective look at anybody who has a dispute with their working hours. We think that, therefore, this contract will make us more vulnerable to working more hours with less protection and will mean that we're already exploited more than we already are. And I have to tell you that the NHS runs on plenty of goodwill and unpaid hours from not only ourselves but from nurses and other healthcare professionals um, throughout. They've also proven to us that they don't like whistleblowers. We are 54,000 junior doctors who are telling them that our contract is not safe and not fair, and yet they're trying to push it through. Well, they've said as much. They're going to impose it on us no matter what. So if you're thinking about the future, where we have a guardian role, where we have to come back to them afterwards and say, oh, the last couple of months they've been making me work more, what's going to, how are they going to listen to one whistleblower then when they can't listen to 54,000 of us now? Hunt misrepresents scientific articles. The Department of Health has suppressed data from NICE reports about the number of safe, uh, of safe staff members for nurses in a &E's. There's recent evidence that shows that, that the government have had information from scientific journal articles before they were published. They're attacking our nursing bursaries. And what I think all of this amounts to is that they are attacking our NHS. And the imposition of the contract will be another, of the junior doctor contract, will be another nail in the coffin of the NHS and will be forced into private health care. Which brings me back to my original point that we are more than just junior doctors and we feel that we're fighting for the very future of the NHS. doctors do? Well, we're doing our best. Um, when the BMA balloted us, I'm sure you've heard the statistics, but 98% of the people that returned their ballots were in support of industrial action. So when David Cameron and Jeremy Hunt tell us about their mandate to implement a seven-day NHS, we say to them, tell us more about this mandate. We've got 98% of our membership who want to uh, go for industrial action. We've announced more industrial action dates. Um, three of them um, staggered over the next coming weeks. Each of them will be two days at a time. They'll be for 48 hours, but we will still continue to provide emergency care to you like you, will, like you would have at a weekend or on a bank holiday. What we're doing locally is we're trying to engage with our uh, Chief Executive Officer of the University of Hospitals, Lester Trust. There are different trusts within the country, I won't get into too much detail, but those who are foundation trusts have allegedly a proven track record and will not be forced to impose the contract on their employees. We, unfortunately, in Leicester, do not, are not part of a foundation trust. But we're still asking John Adler to listen to his employees and to try to ask the government to come back to negotiation with us through ACAS. The other thing that the BMA is doing is they're asking for an equality impact assessment report to be done on the imposition, on the contract that's about to be imposed on us. So those are some of the things that we're doing. What can other people do to help us? Well, you can write to your local MPs. We can have joint demonstrations, because as I think I'm hoping you'll have heard, a lot of our contract issues are very similar to your contract issues. And you can ballot your own members for strike action regarding your own issues. And then all of us can stand together. Thank you. Thank you for that, Gianna. Um, I'm going to hand over now.